Hello everyone. Today we are going to see a problem based on thermal stresses. Let us read the question one time. A steel bar is placed between two copper bars each having same area and same length as the steel bar. A steel bar is kept between two copper bars. These copper bars having the same area and same length as the steel bar. These are rigidly connected together at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. When the temperature is raised to 325 degrees Celsius, the length of the bar is increased by 1.5 millimeter. We have to compute the original length and final stresses. The Young's modulus for steel and copper are given. The coefficient of linear thermal expansion for steel and copper are given. First, let us make a given data. The Young's modulus are given in gigapascal. We can convert them into kilonewton per millimeter square. The alpha value for copper is higher than the alpha value for steel. Now let us find delta T. For that we have to subtract the initial temperature by the final temperature. When we do that we are getting 300 degree Celsius. The increase in length is given as 1.5 millimeter. We know that the area of steel and copper bars are same. Since there are two copper bars, the area of copper is 2A and the area of steel is A. In the first figure, the bars are restrained. So even if there is a temperature change, there will be no change in length. Suppose the bars are free to expand when the temperature rises, the copper bars will expand more than the steel bar because the alpha value for copper is higher than the alpha value for steel. The change in length due to temperature change in the copper bars is alpha Cu L delta T and in the steel bar is alpha STL delta T but in reality it won't happen like this. The copper bars and steel bar will take a intermediate position. For the copper bars to take this intermediate position they have to compress by delta L Cu. So in the copper bars there will be compressive stress for the steel bar to take this intermediate position, it has to expand by delta L S T. So in the steel bar, there will be tensile stress. Now let us make an expression. Alpha C U L delta T is equal to alpha S T L delta T plus delta L S T plus delta L C U. We can take alpha STL delta T on the other side. It will come as negative. L and delta T are common. We can take them outside. We know the formula for the change in length PL upon AE. We know that the stress sigma is equal to P upon A. So for P upon A, we can apply sigma. Using this formula, we can rewrite these two terms. We know that sigma is equal to P upon A. So, P is equal to sigma into A. The value of P will be same in both of the materials. So, we can write sigma ST into AST is equal to sigma CU into ACU. We can take AST on the right side. It will come in the denominator. Let us apply the values of ACU and AST. Finally, we are getting sigma ST is equal to 
2 sigma c u for sigma st we can apply 2 sigma c u let us take sigma c u and l outside because they are common then we can eliminate l then let us apply the values of est ecu alpha st alpha cu and a delta t after the calculation we are getting sigma cu we can convert sigma cu either in newton per millimeter square or mega newton per meter square we know that sigma cu is compressive to find sigma st we have to multiply sigma cu by 2 when we do that we are getting sigma st which is tensile the change in length delta l is given in the question we have to find the length l we know that the change in length delta l is equal to alpha st l delta t plus delta l st using this concept we can find the length l the change in length is given in the question a 0.15 millimeter for delta l st we can use this expression which we have made earlier let us apply the values of est alpha st delta t and sigma st after the calculation we will get l which is equal to 33.9 millimeter or 0.0339 meter alternatively using the formulas we can solve this problem to find sigma st we have to use this formula to find sigma cu we have to use this formula this is the formula to find the change in length using the formula we can find the value of l now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video